Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to another video on my channel. Today about using Scala extensions in our Spark code to make our code better readable and also better testable. Good to have you here and let's dive right into it. Okay, I have set up a small sample project <clears throat> for demonstration purposes. And what we do here is basically construct a Spark session, which is going to be the entry point into the Spark world for us. And then we set um, the log level to <clears throat> only produce warnings so that we don't see all of the info logging that Spark usually produces. And then we load a data set, which is called orders. And you can think of that as orders being um, traded on a stock market. Now an order has a timestamp, a member who sends the order, an instrument ID, um, which is de which it's dealing, and then also a quantity um, of how large the order is, and then also a type. Now, but that's not so important. Um, that's simply the example domain we're in. Now I have created a simple use case, which is totally made up, um, <clears throat> where we basically want to find the interval or the duration for which an order was the most recent one on each of the instruments. And therefore we only want to look at market orders. So first of all, we take the orders and then we filter them to only be market orders. And then we basically scan over um, the window, which we have defined, which basically partitions our data frame into instrument uh, by instrument ID, and then sorts them by timestamp. So, do we, so that we have groups for each instrument, which are um, sorted by timestamp in ascending order. So in order to find the interval for which a order was the most recent one for the instrument, and we have to look at the next order and when it has been placed. Now then, so first we, we pull the timestamp of the next order for the instrument into the current order. And then um, we basically create the duration by using the difference between the two timestamps. And that will eventually lead to the result that we wanted to see. Now, if we execute this code, um, Spark will print this output um, into the logs um, because we have this show statement down here. Now we have produced the result or we can see the result here. And what we see, for example, that for instrument ID one, we have two orders and um, this is already the final result. So we have a valid from and valid two timestamp for each of the orders. And then we also have the um, duration of the interval, which in this case is four hours. And we can see that this is correct in this case. Another thing to mention is we have a de default lead value, which is the last order where, where there's no subsequent order in our data frame will not be able to find the next one obviously. So therefore we, we hand in a default lead value because if we don't find the next order, we use this default value. And as we have orders only from one particular day, which is the 1st January of 2023, um, we use the end of day for this date. Okay. But actually we wanted to talk about Scala extensions. Now, the first thing we can do um, to make this code more readable, because, you know, we have to scan through this entire code here, code segment, to understand what's actually happening. To make it more readable, we could actually refactor that into methods, um, because by defining a method, we can assign a name to a small code fragment. So what we could do, for example, is to take this code block and extract it into a new method. And now we can assign a name to the um, method here, and we could say um, to intervals and here would go the code which creates the intervals for each of the orders so now we have we were, we are calling this um, method here um, which has a name so we we understand that we are um, creating intervals from our orders but now we have uh, done the inference incorrect because um, we didn't um, specify the return type here so we would like to return a data frame here so that we don't get this um, error here. Now, what we also need to do is um, to import the Spark implicits because we don't have them in scope here anymore. So what we could do is import um, orders and then we can, we can retrieve the Spark session from the data frame, which is quite handy. And then we um, import the implicits here. 
Now many of the errors should be gone. And now it's already better readable. And what we could also do is basically um, also refactor this line here into a new method. Um, that would make sense because the, here are actually two things happening in this function and the name doesn't really represent it. So we could also um, create a second one um, which we can call with duration and we also pass in basically intervals or let's call it df as data frame. It's quite generic here what we do. So on this statement basically goes here. So we, we just say df um, So we import the implicits here as well. So that we ret so we return the uh, data frame with a new column called duration, which is basically derived from valid from valid two. So we are re relying on that it, that the data frame passed into this function already has valid from and valid two as columns. So now we uh, have to call this method as well. So what we would do is basically we would call two intervals first. And then we, on top of that, we would uh, call with duration on the result of, of this call. And then we would end up with the same result as before. Now that's not uh, Scala extensions, but that's simply refactoring and obeying to clean code principles, meaning that we, that we basically are developing very simple fragments of code, which are now actually are easily testable because we can test uh, first the two intervals method um, with specific input data and expect expected output data. And then secondly, we can also independently test it with duration method rather than having it untestable and, and entangled in one code fragment within our main method or whatever you call it. Okay, but the interesting part is now uh, using Scala extensions. Now Scala has a feature which allows um, it to infer a method call from an implicit context. So what we can do is define an implicit class. So I will do it here. Implicit class. And then we say order extensions. And what we do is we pass in um, an argument, which is a data frame. And then we, we define methods within this implicit class, which are basically our functionality that we want to have, basically these two functions, and we add them to this implicit class. Now we have to make them um, not private so that, that they are accessible from outside. And actually we can also use this um, Spark implicit import into the scope of the entire class. Now we have a implicit class order extensions and it's defining two methods. And the order extensions is taking one argument in its constructor, which is a data frame, and both methods, methods they return a data frame as well. Now having this, we can actually call these functions on a data frame. So instead of doing this nested function call, we can basically start from orders and then say, for example, um, two intervals. I have uh, something too much here because this two intervals, it doesn't have to take an argument anymore um, because the data frame is, al is already passed into this um, extension as a value in the constructor. So we can use this class field here within our method. So here we don't use orders, which was the previous parameter, but here we can use df, which is in the scope of the class. And the same is true here. So this will use the um, class field now. Now here we can call two intervals. And what we can also do is basically specify the default value as a parameter. So we call it default lead value, which is a timestamp. So we can move this one up here and then pass it um, into this function. So it's used within the function. And then on top of this, so this is basically resolved by 
Um, so Spark uh, Scala knows here we have a data frame and then we are trying to call a function on a data frame um, which is not defined in the in the data frame class. So it, it checks the implicit context and it finds a function which basically takes a data frame and returns a data frame which is called to intervals and that's how this function call is resolved here. And then we on top of that we can even call um, with duration and we end up with the same result. So this one we don't need anymore. If we scroll up a little bit, we have a much cleaner code. So now the code is quite readable. So we know that we are taking orders, we're transforming them to intervals, and then we also add the duration in a column. And yeah, that's the point of this video. I just wanted to show you that. Now, if we run this again, we will get the same result as we got before. And yeah, it's up to you to use this feature um, to your needs. Um, of course, it has to make sense to define such things. So it makes uh, the most sense to um, do this for functions, which, we, which you have to use um, frequently. Also, um, what's important to mention is, <clears throat> so this implicit um, class here works on data frames. But if you're using data sets, um, like typed data sets, you can even uh, define extensions which will only work for specific case classes or data, uh, data sets of a specific case class. So you can write um, code which you can chain nicely together to specify how you want to transform your data using Spark and Scala. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, don't forget to subscribe if you like to see more content like this. And yeah, I hope to see you soon.